In the first video, it was kind of a, it was kind of an, an overview of the previous teachings that are foundational to this teaching on sacrifice. It teaches us about how that new covenant is at work in Old Testament figures. It teaches us about how What's the other one? Oh yes, Yeshua's mission statement. We see Yeshua's mission statement play out time and time again all throughout all of creation from year zero and will continue to play out until the day of vengeance comes. And only those people who have accepted Yeshua's mission in their lives will be on the sheep side and not the goat side, the wheat side and not the tares side. They will be the seed brought into the barn. And then we have our second video, which goes into the different parts of the sacrifice and what each part represents. And uh, noting that it's a good idea for you to go and study uh, Leviticus chapter 1, because in studying that with a better understanding, it will help you to tend the tabernacle of your heart. Is the tabernacle of your heart being guided by your desires, which have been placed there by Satan? Or have you accepted that the Old Testament is legitimate, that it was put there for a reason, and that its purpose is to teach them and us exactly how the Father tends the tabernacle of our hearts? After all of that, um, we get into the burnt offering again. He talks about the burnt offering twice. So that's real important here in the first few chapters, that burnt offering, that's holy burnt, this thing that is representing our sin nature, our flesh, what makes up like 95% of us, not just our physical bodies, but our desires the way that we want people to treat us, the way that we treat other people, the standards and morals and values that we live by, right? When we wholly burn that, we're, ex we're going to be set apart. We're going to be set apart from society. We're going to be set apart from the church. We're going to be set apart from the Hebrew roots movement. We're going to be set apart from the Jewish people. We're going to be set apart unto Yeshua. Society... It's got its things that it's doing right, and it's got its things that it's doing wrong. Same for the church. The church built America. America's fallen apart because the foundation wasn't whole. They've accepted parts of Yeshua, but not all of him. And when he invited them to take another step in sanctification as a country, we denied him. And now we're in a point where evil people a few loud bad apples are causing us all to build golden calves that look like Yeshua. Sorry, I just I, I digressed a little bit there, but it is apropos for our time, and you must walk in righteousness if you are going to be righteous. And this is a time when you have great opportunity to exercise your faith. So those burnt offerings represent us burning up the things that will be accepted by all of those different groups. The church is doing right things and wrong things. The Hebrew Roots Movement is doing even more right things and some wrong things. The Jewish folks, they're doing a lot of right things, but they're not, they're not doing everything wrong. They're not doing everything right either. When we are set apart unto Yeshua, it's possible to get to a point where we are doing, where we wake up every day, and we've made it our heart's desire and our mind's focus to do his will for years and years and years. And then we become a Zecharias, the husband of Elizabeth, the parents of John the Baptist, or a Job who is blameless and upright in all that he does. There are several other figures who are presented to us in that way, showing us that we can 
be pleasing to the Father if we work at it. Those people have come to the tabernacle of their heart. They have sacrificed the burnt offering wholly. They have rightly sacrificed the peace offering in their heart. That's all about clean animals. Clean animal offerings made before Yahovah, burnt as food and is a sweet-smelling aroma to our Father. We went over what grain offerings are about, and uh, kind of to end this off, he mentions fat and blood, right? And he says a blanket statement. There are very few blanket statements in being the fathers, but this is one of them. The fat, which represents the protection and the storage, as we learned in the previous video, is not for the people. It is not for the priests. It is for God alone to handle. You shall not eat the fat and you shall not eat the blood. Don't be confused. He's not telling you that you can't have fat on your steak. The part of the fat that we're not supposed to eat is not sold to us in the markets. There's the fat that's like running through the meat, and then there's the part that's called the suet. Suet is like the fatty lobe attached to the liver. Suet is like the fat that surrounds and protects the organs. It's not the fat that's found in the meat. It's the suet. So this fat is not for the people. It's not for the priest. It's only for God to handle. Same with the blood, the life, the material. That So what is the blood? The blood is the life. Okay, great. Can we see past that, though? What is the life? The, the blood's purpose is that it is the material that transports all things throughout the body. Right? The body doesn't communicate with itself through words. The body communicates through itself through chemicals and materials, releasing some chemicals and expelling other chemicals and taking in other chemicals. That is the body's um, um, emotional highway. That is the body's information highway, the blood. Now, the people and the priests handle the blood and the fat, but they're handling it for Yahovah under his strict guidance. Or, as we see, no guidance at all. There is no priesthood. There is no temple right now. They weren't following his guidance. It's not available to us. But even though they handle it under his strict guidance, they do not partake in it as food, the same way that Yahovah does. So there are those things. This is probably something I could have led with, but I'm going to end with this. There's three men standing up on a wall, a long wall that they can walk across. I got this from Daniel Botkin in his Botkin Bimonthly. The first man's name is Mr. Fe Mr. Fact. The next man, his name is Mr. Faith, and the last one is Mr. Feelings. So Mr. Fact can see where he's going, but Mr. Faith and Mr. Feelings cannot. As long as Mr. Fact keeps his eyes on the wall and keeps taking another step forward, he's good to go. As long as Mr. Faith keeps his eyes on Mr. Fact, he won't fall off the wall. He just keeps his eyes on Mr. Fact and keeps on taking the same steps Mr. Fact is keeping. And so long as Mr. Feelings keeps his eyes on Mr. Faith, then he won't fall off either. If Mr. Feelings takes his eyes off Mr. Faith, Mr. Feelings is off the train. If Mr. Faith gets worried about Mr. Feelings and turns around to check on him, uh-oh. He's taken his eyes off of Mr. Fact, and now both Mr. Feelings and Mr. Faith have fallen off the wall. Mr. Fact is holy scripture, unadulterated truth, the perfect word. 
that makes us whole. If your faith is not keeping its eyes on the facts that are in Scripture, then you may as well be one of the masses that have faith in evolution. Evolution being something that there is no evidence of and nobody has seen yet. But if your faith is founded on Scripture, on the truth, then you're still up on the wall. What about Mr. Feelings? I'll tell you what. If your Mr. Fact is walking on the right wall, and your Mr. Faith is keeping his eyes on Mr. Fact, and you have learned to ta- use that to take authority over your feelings, you don't have to go to the doctor anymore for your feelings, (laughs) okay? Your feelings no longer become this burdensome thing that if you have any kind of depth in them, you are diseased and non-functioning or functioning improperly. Instead, your feelings become useful. There's plenty in Scripture about how wonderful feelings are if you're walking with the Lord. Depth of feelings, whether they are feelings of sadness and woe or they are feelings of joy and triumph. They become useful, necessary in your relationship with the Lord. Don't let your feelings get in the way of the facts that have been presented to you today. Instead, Let the Father have authority over sin and function in your right capacity. Answer the altar call to the tabernacle of your heart and let the Lord be the king over your temple. Amen.